Welcome, everybody, back to another edition of Nick and Narf, two brothers in Tucson, Arizona, bringing you music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond. We're working with a group today that you guys know we love, Steely Dan. Yes. Uh, we're going to take songs from two separate albums. The first one we're doing is what album, Frank? We're doing Can't Buy a Thrill. And the song we're doing is Reeling in the Reeling in the Years. Reeling. It's not Reeling. It's Reeling <laughs> yeah. apostrophe in the Years. Uh, in any event, I was talking to Frank and I said, hey, let's do a song where we show the masterful, you know, just the physical uh, beauty of their music, but yet they get more sophisticated, let's say, as time goes on, as we do in the song Peg. That's right. Now, I'm not saying which song I like better. Okay, I like Reeling in the Years better. <laughs> but I love Peg as well. I love, I love the entire album, which is what album, Frank? That one is Asia. Asia. From 1978. Now, we know there's a lot of great songs in Asia, but in six years, we just see the sophistication from their very first album, to their what fifth sixth album is asia uh yeah i think so can't buy a thrill countdown yeah. katie lied um, uh pretzel logic pretzel logic and then uh and then uh, royal scam so yeah. it's, their, it's their sixth album sixth album so from their first to their sixth still phenomenal musicality but yet i believe they they get a little more, bit more sophisticated but yet you can see the great things like Phenomenal harmonies. That part where they go, are you reeling in? I mean, is that perfect harmony? I know it's a studio and you can make it sound perfect, but they did. And that's Fagan. Well, and Can't Packer. Buy a Thrill is, is the first album by Steely Dan. And it was the harker, a harbinger of great things to come. What an album. But this is the part of the Steely Dan that's closest to my heart. Because that was when I first started discovering him. This one in Countdown to Ecstasy. Uh, just... The, the raw rock and roll Steely Dan, the pure musicality with the pop influence as well. But then when we got to Asia, we took a big left turn and then Steely Dan made a quantum leap to incorporating jazz into and all that I, music. And then I you know, asked Frank, I said, was it Reeling in the Years the song that really made it for them? And he said, no, what song is it? Oh, it's, it's uh, you know, do it again. Do it again. That was yeah. their first hit that, that I remember being on the radio. And then Reeling in the End came, uh, Reeling in the Years also right played after out. It. Yeah, I mean, there were so many songs on yeah, there. Yeah, they played a played now and then. But and that then, was on Countdown. Bodhisattva was oh, on Countdown right, to Countdown. Countdown. And then uh, My Old School. My Old School is on Countdown as well. Yeah. So, so you got all these great songs, but they seem to mesh together and all come out at the same time. Well, yeah, there was, it was a very short time between uh, Can't Buy a Thrill and Countdown to Ecstasy. Yeah. I mean, they, they, you know... They struck a nerve, Steely Dan struck a nerve with this first album, and they, they, they wanted to get them out to produce another album and really quick. And this first album was number 17 when it came out. So 17, again, remember yep. the year, 72, all the great acts that were out so there. So many. And of course, they are on the Rolling Stones' top 500 albums of all time. So. Great album. I mean, all the Steely Dan's are on my top 100 albums almost of all time. Not quite, but they're great. And again, hey... Glad you could join us, by the way. Uh, we're Nick and Narf, and this is our seventh edition of Double Dan Day. We've been doing this for a long time. We know you, a lot of you guys really enjoy when we do Steely Dan, and we're looking forward to this and combo, you know what, which Nick of, selected today. I yeah, let Nick pick both I of these both them. And the reason is I wanted to show the comparison, not only in, the, in the, the type of melody, but I wanted to show the fact that they're still so strong on melodies, on the way they can change the song from chorus to back to the main verse, so to speak, with, with flawlessly. But then those great harmonies that come in, and obviously we all know that on Peg, it's Michael McDonald singing background vocals. Uh, yeah. Hotter and the others do a great job on the background here. And then I also wanted to point out, which I always thought it was Skunk doing the lead on Reeling in the Years, and it's Elliot Randall. And with, yeah, I'm sure, really. hope from Denny Diaz or Denny Diaz, whatever you guys say. It's Denny Diaz. I don't know. <laughs> it's Denny he Diaz. calls himself Diaz. But he, I don't know if he calls himself. Yeah, we heard him. Yeah. Said he, he said he called himself Denny Diaz. Denny Diaz? Well, okay. Yeah. Well, you're living with me, buddy. You're not dying. <laughs> so anyway, I just I wanted to pick these two songs, and it's time to hear some all right, we're ready to get going. But before we do, we'd like to ask you again, as we always do at the beginning of our show, could you please subscribe, like, and share if you haven't, because it helps us spread the love and the music because we care for your ears. And also, if you have, we want to thank you so much because we love your support, appreciate all you guys do to help nourish what we try to accomplish with the show. And, uh, you know, we just, we're grateful to and be doing it. And we got that raw Steely Dan coming in right now. But here we go. Let's do it from the, the first Steely Dan album, Can't Buy a Thrill. Here it is. Reeling, Reeling in the In ears. the Bass. Reeling in the Bass. <laughs> Yo. 
you like to be a lead guitarist and say gee you're going to play a lead a lead to the entire song i mean you know that's what he did here <laughs> now as much as sometimes jim hotter's drumming i i felt came up a little short especially on um my old school i thought he did a perfect job with this song oh it, no it's it nice. wasn't overbearing but it was it, it was filling you know I, there was I, enough- nick and i still remember we you know we saw steely dan live when uh, pretzel logic was coming out and we saw him twice on yeah. that tour we saw him the first time at long beach arena 1973 and i remember when skunk and denny diaz did this uh-huh. diaz did this double lead because uh, uh elliot randall wasn't on the tour with them but right. man it, it was a showstopper when we saw when and, they played you know, reeling nice in the because sometimes if you watch reeling on the ears uh, where they do live performances, they really speed it up almost too much. When we saw them, they did it just at the perfect speed. And of course, they had double drummers, and I don't remember who the other was. It was Jeff Porcaro. Oh, Jeff Porcaro. Okay. A young so, Jeff Porcaro was on right. the tour. 
along with Jim Hodder on the double drums, double piano. We had double guitars. We had double everything. everything. Doubled our pleasure. Doubled mm-hmm. our fun. And you know, another thing that just blows me away about this song is after a while, it's almost as if the harmonies are an instrument. Yeah. It's like they sink in together. You're not listening to the, necessarily the harmonies versus the muse, the music. You're listening to it all as one. And it's, it blows me away how well they you do You know what that. gets me too is that Donald Fagan was really reticent about singing. And you hear, you'd listen to him singing these songs on this album. You think, what a terrific voice. Why was he, what was he afraid of? Why didn't he want to just take the... Like, like after that in Countdown, just take the bull by the horns and just become the lead singer. Perfectionist. But he he is sounded just a perfectionist. so good. You're right. He was a perfectionist. And I think he, he really had reservations about his voice. But my God, he sings it so nicely. Here. And let's be honest. I, look, singing and playing a musical instrument at the same time can be maybe difficult. Maybe it was hard for him to play the piano and sing at the same time without singing over on doing a voiceover. Well, they were over. just starting out. They were just starting to discover yeah. who they were as a band in a lot of ways. But... What a great, great song. What did you guys think? Uh, Reeling in the Years, Nick's first what's selection. Your, what's your favorite Double part Dance on there? Seven. There are some parts where the bass sounds so great. Obviously, the lead guitar is phenomenal. And don't forget the lyrics. How great the lyrics are. How clever. How imaginative. How, I mean, and really the harmonies. Great. I mean, what more can we say? The piano fills. What Beautiful. was Becker playing down there? Bass? What's he playing? Yeah, I think he's playing bass there. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of like you're wondering. Oh, Nick, yeah, you're right. Hey, he's Walter, come on out of there. Take that needle out of your arm. Come on over here. <laughs> oh, come on. Be nice. Oh, anyway, sorry. all right, listen. That was our first choice. We're going to get to our second half of Double Dan Day 7 with Nick's other selection from Asia. It's Peg. So we'll be right back. We've got to take a little intermission to change CD, yeah. and we'll get to Peg we from Asia. We will come back to you. We will. We will come back to you. Hold on. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We're ready to go with our second selection here, Nick's selection. This is Nick's Double Dan Day today, and he wants us to play Peg because it is the other song he wanted to show as a counterpoint to Reeling in the Years to show you what we're looking at from the first album to the really turning point of their career, their biggest selling album, Asia, from 1978. And Peg, actually, with uh, along with Ricky Don't Lose That Number, and what was, what was the other one? Hey 19? Hey 19. I said with the three longest charts charting songs in steely dan history can so you believe that I those three songs that. were on the charts longer than any others i'm not sure hey 19 i put it in there, but it doesn't oh, matter it hit? what i wanted to contrast again is not is the rawness frank doesn't like me calling it rawness but the rawness of reeling in the ears to the sophistication of peg and not that not that it's just so that much different it's just you can see their beautiful talent, but the way that they do harmonies, the way that they incorporate breaks in the song well, and bring you and draw you back in is just amazing. Nick's going to read you all the musicians on this song. When you go from five musicians on Reeling in the Ears or six musicians on Reeling in the Ears to how many? Ten or eleven? I think just ten or take eleven. A listen. Take Donald a listen. Sagan vocals, Michael McDonald background vocals, Jim Graydon lead guitar, Jim Graydon. Uh, Steve Kahn, rhythm guitar, Paul Griffin, Fender Rhodes, electric piano and backing vocals, Don, uh, excuse me, Don Grolnick, clavinet, Chuck Rainey, bass guitar, Rick Morata, drums, Victor Fellman and Gary Coleman on percussion, Tom Scott, Lyricon. And then, of course, there's still Walter Becker. So, I mean, the, <laughs> the point is... The way these guys wrote songs, it was it was an, a, a work of art. They would do it in layers, and I believe that this one here it became like a laboratory, the studio yes. for them. Whereas before, I mean, it was like more straightforward rock and simpler. This became experimentation with sounds and instrumentation. And, and, and we everybody. all know the stories about how many takes it took to get a song uh, of, when doing Asia, because my gut is they had quite a bit of money to work with, and on Gaucho, yeah. well, especially and, on Gaucho. Yeah, and the point is these guys guys wanted to put out the absolute best songs they could and i just believe that they're it's like it's like creating a beautiful recipe when you're cooking you know you miss one little ingredient it destroys it it doesn't taste the same and and these guys just do such a great job of putting in the right ingredients absolutely so if you're ready to hear it we are ready to play it here it is from asia peg Big debut It's like a 
many things to say about that song, but you know, in their earlier days, they would have had a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal guitar outro in there somewhere. I mean, they still had the guitar playing in there, but it wasn't the focus of the outro. They had so much going on there that they were playing off each other. But what a great song. <laughs> it is jumpy. It is one of the jumpier songs on that album, you know? I mean, it really, really, really moves. And it's got a really infectious and beat. And the layers. I mean, the layers of the... Dun, 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 I mean, just that little part makes you sit there and go, wow, who would have thought of putting that You know what's so there? amazing about it, especially a band like Steely Dan, is that... You know it's Steely Dan from song to song, and yet every song is its own miraculous little invention so and good, yeah. distinctive. It has hints of other stuff, but it has its own great identity, and they can keep... I don't know how they come up with these melodies from song to song, from album to album, just so unique and wonderful uh, and complex and rich. And why I wanted to do these two songs, it's, it's because somehow I, I see a hint of old Steely Dan in, in Asia. In, in terms of just the phenomenal, their heads must have been thinking these friggin' great melodies and how to put them down on tape with guitars, with with uh, piano, with vocals. It just, to me, it just, it's a talent that's so God-given, it's ridiculous. Well, they're one of the greatest of all time and among our top five favorite bands of all time. It's great, deserving of all Number praise. Number two for me. Why did you guys think of Peg? Why did you think of Reeling in the Years? you enjoy our combo? I think it was a, a wonderful combo. I'll thank Nikki here. I let him, said, hey, man, run with this one, baby. And yeah. he loved these two songs. And I'm glad we played them because it's been, it's nice to compare the two. And I know, really you know, great. this generation, the generation of anywhere, anyone born after maybe like 1995, Asia is their album. I mean, it's like everybody goes, yeah. wow, Asia. And it is. It's a great album. But boy, go back to your roots and listen. You're right. To- most, most fans of Steely Dan uh, who are, are a little bit are younger, their first album of re- introduction to Steely Dan is Asia. And then when, you re- when they realize that, uh, my God, they had three or four other albums that were totally different in, in terms of the kind of music they played. Not totally different, but... But you, uh, you know what I mean. Raw, more, more, yeah, more it's, fundamentally, it's fundamentally morphed. rock and pop. And then they got to Asia when they started morphing into this it, it jazz is, and unbelievable rhythm and blues. And yet they still excited you like the like the first five uh, Steely Dan albums as well. I Absolutely mean, and, and great. It, and they go on from there as well. I yeah. mean, you know. So anyway, that's why you guys have you've heard us say it so many times. Show me a great group. Show me five great albums or more. With five or six great songs on each great album. And that, that makes them great in my book. That's and right. Obviously, Steely Dan is Anyway, there. leave us your comments about what you thought about today's show. We really thank you for joining us. We ask you again, before we go, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you have, again, we really thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we've done it for today. Another Steely Dan wrapped up in the catalog here. So enjoy. And thanks for being here. And we'll see you next time on Nick and Narf. Thanks for being with us, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.